What's going on folks? Welcome back to another episode. We're starting the day off with Dingus 1 and Dingus 2. How you doing? You doing alright? These guys are so interjected. Today. Look at this. Now they're fighting over plastic. All morning. They've been going crazy. <sighs> just distracting and just running. Anyways, we're starting the day off. Today is trapping day, folks. Okay, we're into trapping season. We've trapped a couple things. We've got the badger. Check. Raccoon. Check. Coyote and Bobcat are on the agenda today. So, the garage still looks like this. It's just an entire mess, but we're gonna clean it up today, kind of organize it a little bit. We were talking to Trapper J. Trapper J is another YouTuber who actually lives pretty close, and he traps tons of coyotes and bobcats, and he catches everything. Like every single day, he catches coyotes. I've never caught a coyote. I caught one in a cable restraint, and that's it. He's crazy. So I'm like, dude, how are you doing so good? I've set so many traps. Whatever. He thinks they're sent on our traps. So if you guys have watched the other trapping videos, you've seen our traps get dug up, our pan covers get exposed, they get set off and don't catch anything. Whatever. He thinks that they're sent on it. So you know, having them laid out like this and then having our dogs run around here and lick stuff and snip, it probably don't help either. That, that also probably doesn't help. So he suggested we power wash the traps and then dunk them. There's this chemical that you dunk them in and it basically is supposed to, it's almost like dunking it in wax, but it, ta like it takes away the scent. So we've set out the traps we wanna use today are these. There's like eight of them in there, or six or eight. I think this is probably like what? Six, or, like that, six yeah. or eight, something like that. These ones are ones we're using. We're putting all of these out today in the backyard for bobcats and coyotes only. That's that's the strap. I want to catch a backyard bobcat or a coyote. I've, I've caught two bobcats in the backyard last year. Never caught a coyote in the backyard. So we're on bobcat and coyote duty, but we need to prepare these traps. We need to get them ready. We start taking this serious because I'm tired of wasting my time, you know, getting the traps dug up and stuff like that when Trevor is out there just clapping cheeks, you know what I'm saying? So what we're gonna do, take these guys out, take them outside, even though it's freezing out, try to power wash them off, get some of the rust off, the scent off, and then we're gonna dunk them and they'll be cleaned off. We're gonna hang them up, let them dry, and we'll be ready to set some traps. You guys stay tuned. Boom, we got the power washer hooked up, folks. I love nothing more in life than power washing things when it's 30 degrees outside. Nice and toasty out here today. But here's the traps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ten. Oh, wow. We were off. That's Way good. More, Ten's good. I don't think we'll probably set ten in the backyard, but, I mean, the once you clean them, they're clean, so you don't have to really clean them again, if that makes any sense. So we're going to try power washing them just to kind of like these rusty guys here. Try to get that rust off if we can just a little bit. I think it'll help. It's not going to hurt. And then... Like I said, we got a special dunk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray them, hang them up, let them dry, put a fan on them, come back later today, dunk them, hang them up, let them dry overnight, and then we're gonna end up setting traps tomorrow because I read on the directions that it needs to sit for 24 hours in order to seal in the scent. So again, we're just, we're trying not to waste our time. If we, if you half ass it, basically, you know, the coyote's gonna smell us. We gotta do everything we possibly can to prevent the coyotes from smelling our trap. So let's get to washing. Real easy start, huh? Guess we're not washing them. I mean, this thing also hasn't been starting for four months, but I mean, it's on, choke, Billy. How's that work? Huh? I guess we are washing them. I saw a little rust come off, but not much. So what we're gonna do is turn this off, fill this bucket up with water, and then kind of just dunk them, rinse them, because obviously spraying it on gravel dirt isn't probably the... Hey, how you doing? I need you to quit putting your scent on my traps, right, buddy? Don't. Hey, Lucy, watch out, buddy. Hey, watch out. Hey, hey, get, can you get, you're gonna, get out of the shot, Rick. Give them the old wash, and now they're clean. All right, clean ones go in the bucket. Boom! There goes the last one, folks. I don't know, if, if we catch a coyote, I'll give him credit, but I don't think that did much. Now we gotta dry them off, otherwise they'll just rust. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them back into the shop, put a big fan on them, let them completely dry, and then come back later today, like I said, dunk them, hang them up, let them dry, and then tomorrow we're gonna set them out.
boom and boom folks big fan on the traps a little fan but listen Rip to headphone users. This thing gets after. It's a little carpet deal. Blowing on these, I'm sure some of you guys are thinking you're just gonna wash them and then it's gonna dry in cold air and it's gonna rust, but there's not really any better way to get them to dry off. I feel like putting these fans on and stuff will prevent it from, like, these things could be completely orange when I come back later today. It very well could happen. I think ideally you take a, you know, some type of towel and dry them all off, but we ain't got time for that. We got other things to do today. So we're gonna let these guys dry off for the next few hours, come back, give them a dunk. People, they also say on the direction to double dunk them. We could always do dunk them and come back and dunk them again or whatever so anyways we're gonna let this dry off and see you guys in a few hours well folks here we are millie what's up buddy how you guys doing hey how you, oh i just i'm an idiot Rip, why did you do that uh, all right now I'll, I'll pet you now because now i gotta take these freaking gloves off and change them yes i do how are you anyways it's dark it's been a couple hours our traps are nice and dry as you can see right here they're looking rusty as ever but perfectly dry traps take them from here we made a little dunk station so this is the stuff we have dump that in there dunk them and then we're gonna set them in there actually just to dry you could hang them up and drip dry but this stuff dries like almost as a solid like a whack so i don't think i don't know i mean you'd be better off hanging them up but we don't have a really good system to hang them all up so i think just put them in put them in a bucket and we'll probably be all right so Let's get to Duncan. All right, give her the old glug glug here. Got it. You're telling me it ain't gonna smell it? I freaking smell it. Dude, I don't even know how to describe it. Can you smell that? It's, it's straight strong. chemical. Yeah. You're telling me the coyotes smell my hands, but not that. Trapper J, I hope you're, I hope you're right. Let's see how this. Oh, yeah, that's money. Give it the old. Oh, yeah. You think that'll be fine? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it'll hurt anything. I don't think it's gonna hurt nothing. I mean, what's the difference between that and it hanging? I mean, it's basically hanging as is. I think we'll probably be alright, so. I mean, at least one one jug work. I, it's hard. I have a hard time believing like, this is gonna make a difference between us catching them now. What if we just start slaying? Maybe we just start murking. I mean, I need all the help I can get, so. Well, we got one dunk. Let's get the rest done. <laughs> have it folks 10 dunked dipped traps and we've got them sitting on this little contraption here to help them kind of dry out um it's supposed to wait 24 hours so we'll, it won't be quite 24 hours it'll probably be like closer to 20 by the time we set these out but to pull job i'm like we're setting all 10 out i didn't think we were but i'm like we're setting all 10 out we're gonna litter my backyard we've got to get a bobcat and a kite before it gets too cold before it starts snowing right now it's like it's pretty good because your traps aren't freezing they're not getting wet from rain and snow and stuff so it's like we really just got to dig deep so tomorrow we're gonna set all 10 out at least 10 and hope we get a cow or bobcat down on the ground you guys stay tuned Shoo! Alrighty, folks, it's the next day. Our traps have been dried and ready to go. We are ready. This is going to be the biggest trapping day of the year. We've got all the traps sitting in there. I think there's like 12, 13, 14 of them sitting in there doing its thing. Soaked them, let them dry. We've got a bin full of gloves and like latex gloves and latex covers. Dirt, hammer, sifter, pounder, auger bit, and then all the bait is dangling down in there so try not to cross contaminate as much as we this is like our our just our actually this actually looks pretty natural look at this there's already kind of some dirt right here and i say that almost almost looks like that could be a print i'm not positive there's like just a couple little dimples right there but we're setting it kind of you can't quite see the house is just right there though it's not too far we're just kind of up and over the hill the plan is to pretty much scatter these traps along the trails that we made we made trails that went all the way down through the woods back down to the pond that is how coyotes are have been traveling is they use these so do deer so we want to set them off to the side just a little bit because we don't want the deer walking on them um, but enough to where if a coyote's walking they turn and then they start doing their little sniffer thing so i think Trap number one, we're gonna put right here. We've got a whole bunch to set out. I'm out, I am after coyotes or bobcats. This is more of a coyote set. Um, we will go really deep, deep into the timber, the cedar trees and stuff like that for the coyote or for the bobcat sets. This is more for the coyote. So with that being said, you guys enjoy. All right, trap number one. Here we go. I'm gonna walk you guys through the first one and then we'll do B-roll time loss for a lot of the other ones. Give you guys updates on strategy just because in case you guys are wanting to trap yourself, help you out a little bit. So this is a number three trap. It's a dogless and it has like a little, uh, 
tripping mechanism. Like it, it clicks into place to where you know it's a hair trigger. So what you do first, take your hammer. That's the old, uh, that's the hammer you need here. So we're gonna do it, I'm trying to look where I want the trap. Cause they're gonna have to step up to get to here. You could put, we could back it up a little bit. I'm almost thinking put the trap here and put the bait up here so it's not, they don't have to quite step up that ledge. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but we're gonna go ahead and go for it. So go ahead and pound you a hole. This is gonna be to bed the trap. A lot of you guys already know about this, but for those of you guys that are new, I'll walk you through. This ground's nice and frozen. All right, we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy. Most people use their hands, but I use my feet because I'm a weenie. And then flip this down, flip this up. And that's hair trigger. It's where if you step on it, boom, just like that. So that's how they work. I'm gonna go ahead and hammer it in the ground before I set it. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about these ones getting away. I don't know how I'm gonna get it in or out. <laughs> and then I make a hole like this and try to seat some of that chain in there. I don't think it's gonna work today just cause I don't think the dirt's just soft enough, but tug on it. Oh yeah, that ain't going nowhere. I think it's gonna be pretty hard to seat this one, but that's probably as good as we're gonna get it right there. So then you set it. Just you, like you that. You were quick with that one. Yeah. You feeling brave today? I feel good with these gloves, honestly. Wow. They give me a little extra kind of like fleece line. They're a little bit padded. If I get snipped, it won't be bad. You can't get snipped the way I just did that, but it's still a little bit scary. So you're gonna wanna bed your trap, but in this heart of dirt, I don't know. You're gonna have to use all this dry dirt. We're gonna end up running out of dry dirt pretty quick, I think, today. I'm just gonna fill in around it, try to seed this, seat this thing. Just like that. Yeah, this is not, that's gonna be a long day, folks. I'll tell you that much. I did not realize this ground was this frozen. All right, so once that's kind of packed in, what you do is you grab your latex cover. So this looks like a little piece of provolone. Take this, set this over without snapping your hands. And that will prevent dirt from getting under the pan cover. Because if the pan cover can't get pressed down because there's dirt under it, then it'll never go off. So then take your dry dirt. Give it one of these, sprinkle it over. Now it's covered. And I didn't bring my brush. I could probably just use this, just to try to flatten it out a little bit. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and dig out. Try to blend that in just a little bit. Definitely not the most natural one I've ever made, I can tell you that much. Just like that. And then, you're not done yet, folks. So your trap is there, you can, so this is not one of my best jobs. It needed to go down another like couple inches, but I was having a tough time digging through the frozen dirt. But trap's here, now it's time to bait it. This is how I'm digging holes. So trap is right here. We're gonna put the hole right up here. Dude, this is literally like going through ice. Imagine this by hand. What would you do if you didn't have a drill? That's good as that one's gonna get, boys. Woo! Yikes. Well, let's put the bait in the hole. All right, here's your bait. That's what you're looking like. This is actually Trapper J stuff. He makes his own bait. Go ahead and just do one of these deals. Throw that down in the hole. I think you said this is like beaver, muskrat, a couple other kinds of different meat. You know what I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do one of those. That way there's no stick, it's just meat in the hole, you know? No stick to be found. I guess I could have used that stick for the lure, but this is bait, not lure. This is lure. So this is the stuff that smells really bad. So lure is to get the coyotes or whatever predator near. The bait is what gets them. They think that there's actual bait and so then that they try to uh, like dig it out. The lure is supposed to just bring them in from a long ways. So you stick this on that. So a lot of people will stick it up so it gets in the air. We are pretty in the open right now. I feel like that might just be too strong. And I know coyotes have, the other thing we might, we might want to stop using this because we've been setting traps with it. I wonder if the coyotes around here like know the strat, you know? They're like, if it smells like this, something goofy, because they've dug up some of our traps. So this may be, I'm gonna only do one with this one. Then I'm gonna change it up to some different lures. They can uh, smell the lure, they come in, they see a feather, they smell the bait, step on the trap, we're good to go. Trap number one is complete. I gotta get a thousand more to go. Shoo! All right, we made it to the next spot here, folks. So the last trap we actually set was not that far from here. It's actually right, right down there, which isn't far, I know. 
But like I said, we have so many traps, we're gonna try kind of scattering them. So this one, I have a trail mode that way, um, which actually it leads to literally nothing, but they might use it, they might not. And then otherwise, I mean, this is a main highway. My neighbor's property's here. There's probably some crossings in some way over here. So we're thinking this is a good intersection to have them kind of come through. So I'm thinking maybe a corner set like here, you know, where they can come up there, they come from here or they come from here, like on a corner. So it's off to the side, so deer shouldn't hit it. I don't want to be having deer set off our traps, but it's close enough to the main highway that it should get some traction. So I think next one, corner set, coyote set, stay tuned. <laughs> Boom, there it is folks, another one down. I'm not, it looks good, well, it set down good, it doesn't look the greatest, but we hit it. I don't know if that's the strap, putting grass over it, the pan's right here. We got lure and bait right there. It's kind of a, a step down, which I think would probably work, but I don't know. We got another one down on the ground, let's go do a third. Shoo, all right, and we're at the next spot here. So I saw a coyote here actually this morning on camera. We've got, this is where I shot my first buck in the backyard, right here in that blind. Camera's still here, pointing at pretty much nothing, just the intersection. So he would have been off the look actually, which trail he was on one of these two so he's either on that one or this one but i'll pull up my phone and look this is where we're going to put another coyote trap it is nice having cameras all around my property because i get to see where the coyotes are and if we catch a coyote here i'll see it on camera so then i don't like i i would know when to go to go look and stuff like that like you got to check your traps every single day but i wake up in the morning i can look like okay we got a coyote and then go get them and we kind of know what's going on so it's not a bad idea to put a trap i've heard like cameras can make coyotes weary but this camera's been here for three months so i i don't think it's probably too freaked out so anyways let's get another one on the ground <laughs> can't even tell where that one is boys pans right here holes right there it's a little bit of a dirt mound had it like i didn't bring my brush i got worried my brush was what was putting scent on it because the brush i've had for a year or two now i mean i've thrown it in the bait bucket before on accident like you just get a little bit worried i need to get a new brush but from here i can't really tell what it is or where it's at but holes there pans there the traps there we got cat number three down on the ground let's go do another Shoo! we got something folks all right we had a few traps left out here a couple dog proofs we ended up setting off a lot of the foothold because we had the puppies with us but this is kind of far enough away from everything we'd have to worry about it and look look what we caught here how you doing junior rip he's alive he's chilling i'm not gonna torment him for too long but that was in a coyote set we put this log here for backing and that's about my luck about every single i mean i'm well, half of these that we're setting right now are probably gonna get you know trap you're gonna trap a raccoon instead of coyotes or whatever but hey look we actually caught something at least uh, if anything we caught something in today's video the first one we've seen along the way we have a couple more traps we can check on our way down we're kind of i was actually gonna re like redo this one rebate it and reset it but one thing i have learned though if you trap a coyote or something an animal reset it because he just got his scent everywhere you can see the trap circle and that'll get coyotes interested so we're actually just gonna dispatch him blind him by the light and then reset it put it back see if we can get a coyote So this is what it looks like, folks. We got the raccoon taken care of. There's a little bit of blood there, Rip. Traps here, new bait holes here. We put a little bit of bait in the hole that was already there. But he, you know, put a ton of scent around here. Like I said, there's one, we put the bait hole right in the dead center of his trap circle and then put the trap right there. So if they come from any direction, if they want to investigate like the blood or any of the bait holes that we have, they should be stepping right there. If you saw the time lapse, I did have the trap randomly go off. I put too much dirt on it 
and it ended up just popping off and it happened. So anyways, on to the next. Shoo! All right, folks, we made a move here. We're now on bobcat duty, okay? So we're changing gears. Where I caught my first bobcat ever last year, well, no, this is my, take it back, that was my, this is my second bobcat, is right up here. I'm gonna go scout it out before we haul everything up, but I know because I left a T-post here because I tried to put a uh, camera. Man, it's frosty here though. This is really cold. This dirt's probably gonna freeze. So right here is where, see right there, you can see it. That's where my old trap was, right there. So they came down from right here. This is where I caught my very first, Take that back. My second bobcat. First bobcat actually came from by the animals. We got a T-post here because we tried to put a camera, but I would say put another one here just because it's it's a good luck spot. I'm sure if you catch one one year, you'll catch another one here as well. It is really cold here though. There's no sun. So you you risk your trap freezing. We ran out of good dry dirt and found somewhat dryish dirt slash clay that we used to build the dam. I mean, that's about the driest stuff we could find. So we ran out of good dry dirt. Now we're onto this, of course, when it's cold, but we're gonna go ahead and put a bobcat trap here and see what happens. <laughs> The old bobcat set. Pretty much the same. The only thing you can really do different with the bobcat is sometimes you can put feathers out. I mean, you need to read your eggs on that because there's, there's rules about like open bait and stuff. But depending on where you have it, I'm not going to do it. The thing is, I've heard coyotes get uh, kind of scared of the uh, feather. So like it's kind of like, yeah, it attracts a bobcat, but you also lose the chance of catching a coyote. I'd rather kind of go two in one. I mean, I've also caught bobcats not using the feather. So there's your set. We actually moved it down a little bit because we noticed there's a trail right here and then there's a trail behind us. There's a trail to the left and then a trail down there. So this is kind of like a four way intersection with a trap right in the middle. So bobcat set number one complete. Shoo! All right, we found another bobcat potential trapping area. So we're driving along our, this is the, that's the original pond there. House is up there just to give you guys kind of perspective of exactly where we're at. This is the, actually this is the trail that we made with the skid loader a few months back. But look at this. I don't know where that leads to, but you can see, actually there might be even another one that goes right there, but that's actually, if I was smart, you'd put a snare right here. But I didn't, oh, I didn't bring, bring any. This is a snare spot. That's literally like the perfect snare spot. Like you could see it's literally just a teeny little opening and it could be raccoons But more than likely it's bobcats and coyotes that are running through here, man That is I've, if I've ever seen a, a snare spot without tall grass We can try a foothold here give it you know, give it a few days Maybe when we come back tomorrow and check them and just bring it like maybe we don't set the the, the bobcat uh, Set up there maybe set it like down here and then you can leave space for basically uh, Another snare of some kind, but I mean if we put the trap I put the trap right on the trail I don't think deer are using that that's too way too low so so even if it's a raccoon, you're gonna catch them. Coyote, you're gonna catch them. And bobcat, you're gonna catch them. So I would say just plant it right here and try to cover it up. And then just throw a little bit of bait and lure around here and see what happens. I was thinking, should we, what do you think? Do you think we should dangle a feather? It is a really good spot to dangle a feather, but. It doesn't uh, hurt enough. Well, it could scare the coyotes. That's oh, the only thing. True. If you think these are coyotes using it. I mean, it seems a little short. Maybe, unless they're looking for rabbits up here. You know, cause the rabbits Maybe. live in, like live in these little bushes. It might be. Why don't we just not do a feather? Like I said, I've caught bobcats. I think both, actually both my bobcat catches were without feathers. So let's go no feather we're gonna set it right on the trail right off this trail but right on this trail and then we come back tomorrow we'll set a snare right there because i think this is a really good little trapping canal here so stay tuned <laughs> We got another one folks we actually changed it up we did two bait holes one two side by side because they're gonna be coming from there or down there i'm guessing there just because there's more timber that way so if they're gonna come down they're gonna come put their nose right here hopefully plant a paw there or if they want to sniff that one so i did both sides with the trap right here right in the middle of the trail so i feel good about this one don't know what you're gonna get could be a raccoon could be a possum could be a bobcat could be a coyote so a lot of options for this one but i'm feeling really good about it i think we're gonna catch one on this one let's go do another one Shoo! 
Woo, all right. Sorry, I know this is getting repetitive. It's shoe, set, a trap, and shoe, more. But I want to kind of show you guys everything we've got going on. So this is more of a bobcat set that we're doing. Um, actually, the blind that I shot my buck at is right there. So we're kind of like down this trail. We're me and Pooja, we cut down a lot of those cedar trees in the hunting episode. Um, but this one isn't really great for trails. But if we put one right here, stuff can crawl. I mean, we see whatever. I don't know what that is. There's like a little, but I mean, there might be a trail there. You don't have to set it on trails. You just, I think that the closer you are tucked up in these cedar trees like this, the better chance you have for bobcat. Coyotes, I don't think so. I think these, this is more of a bobcat set, um, but it's already kind of flat right here and it's nice and warm. It's not frozen ground. And they can come from all that cedar and just sneak right here. And this is already easy backing. Put your put your uh, dirt hole here with the bait and put the trap here and you'll be good to go. So let's get this trap in the ground. Boom, we got another one, folks. So I put the dirt hole there. We actually dripped a little bit of lure on there and then on that stick. There's your trap trails, trails where they can come up. They come up from here, that's fine. They're gonna have to circle this because this is kind of some natural backing here. So we got another one out. I'm feeling good about that one for the old bobcat set. So we're gonna loop around. Honestly, I know this is getting repetitive for you guys. So Pool Jet and I, we're gonna run around, probably set a couple more out, and then we'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the first backyard trap check of the video. You guys stay tuned. Wow, 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 folks. It's the next morning. We're checking traps and well, we got one. Hey, Junior, how's it going? Was that a back foot catch? Oh, double whammy back foot. Ricky. Oh, Rip. Oh, God, he ain't going nowhere, son. Oh. That was such a good set, too. You had to ruin it, huh, Junior? Hey, hey. Everybody wants to see you. Say hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, he's freaking pissed. All right, well, you guys already know the drill. Blinded by the light. Alrighty folks, well it's the next day. Freaking snowed out here. So far all we've got, well we I guess we technically got a raccoon but that didn't really count towards the new traps out and a possum. But it snowed. So today's objective even if these are coyote tracks right here. Really? Yeah. I was like even if we don't get anything at least we're gonna be able to strat- look at this. Coyote, that's that's not even Millie or Lucy. We haven't let them out. And it's headed, it's headed towards the houses. Yeah, no it's headed this way. See? It looks, yeah. See it's going that way? Look where the house is. They, they're walking, maybe we gotta set traps. The only reason why I don't set traps right here is because I worry about the dogs. We try not to let Millie and Lucy out during trapping season, like let them run, run. But like this is really, you know, it'd take them three seconds to come here. So I, I don't really want to trap my dogs. But I was literally just about to say, even if we don't get anything today, we're at least gonna see some tracks from last night. Since it, it snowed basically yesterday and overnight, now it's all snowy. But look, that'd be the old coyote and he's headed that way. So anyways, I just, I was just gonna give you guys an update and then all of a sudden I was like, wait crap, there's one right here. So either way, we're gonna go run and do our trap line check. Um, we did not reset. Yesterday there was a couple of them that got set off. Obviously the possum was there. A couple, of, we didn't even reset them, we didn't have time. Um, I was like, it's gonna snow anyway. Now that there's snow here, we're pretty much going to have to redo all of our traps anyways because the snow is gonna melt and then get the dirt wet and then the dirt's gonna freeze. So we've got like today and probably tomorrow and then I'll probably end up pulling all the traps. So anyways, let's go check the rest. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh. we got him. Oh my god, we got one. Oh my god. Oh, I would do I was like, Ty, get some dope B-roll. We're going through the snow. All right, we better get out. I don't I gotta see how good he's trapped. We got it, got him. Dude, first cut. Oh sorry, I was watching first, him. First coyote. Okay, we got I gotta get out. We got the He's few barely in there. Dude, that's my first foothold coyote ever, bro. Is ever, it really? Ever, ever. I've never trapped one by a foothold. I I, I did a, a cable restraint last year. Oh my god, all right, I'm gonna get the pew ready in case he starts getting squirrely with us. We got a coyote, boys. Oh my god, look at this guy. Dude. He's not that big, but he's got really sweet colors. All right, we're, we're gonna go ahead and dispatch him. I don't want you guys to have to, you know, 
sit there and watch him. Obviously, he's trapped. We're gonna go ahead and take care of business, and then we'll show you up what he looks like up close. Blinded by the light. Here's Buddy. Not a giant one, but some of you guys might be thinking this is sad. I know he might look like some of you guys' dogs at home, but if you have a dog at home, especially little guys like Finn, imagine this guy and a whole pack of them coming after him, taking him out, eating livestock, you know, little ass down there. These guys are capable of killing a lot. So I know some of you guys might think it's sad, per, you know, particularly like, uh, sh I like sh hunting coyotes for the purpose of protecting livestock. I mean, my house is 200 yards from here. You saw the tracks right in the backyard. Um, obviously, you know, the chickens, the ducks get out. These guys can crawl through. They can climb over the fences. So it's really important to, you know, do predator control if you've got livestock, small dogs, stuff like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I am going to get this guy mounted though. Never gotten a full mount for coyotes before. Um, I've gotten them tanned and skinned and stuff like that, but I've never gotten a full mount in it. I feel like this guy, it's a boy by the way, I feel like he's a good size and uh, he's got really, really cool colors on him. So we're actually gonna take this guy straight to the taxidermist today and we'll go in there, we'll film the taxidermy and show you guys some of the options and you know, show you what we decided to do with Buddy here. But my first coyote ever with a foothold. All I gotta say is huge shout out to Trapper J, okay? He helped us out. This was, honestly, Pool J, this was one of our like random spots. Yeah, this, this one was weird. This was not on like, I mean, it was kind of on a main trail like you saw where you put the mule up um but there's really nothing here it, it to me it's all about numbers and time you know the more traps you have out for the longer period of time without disturbing them and resetting them that's one thing that trapper jay told me he's like just drive past your traps don't get out don't rebate don't walk around don't get your scent and that's exactly what we did for the last couple of days we just we drove it we didn't get out we didn't play with it if they were already set off we just left them and so you set out a whole bunch and as they keep getting set off you just try to minimize the amount of time that you spend in this area and it obviously paid off plus the snow helped a lot because obviously the animals all the all the predators start moving a lot more um, when it's snowy because it's harder to find food so Anyways, we got Buddy, he's down on the ground, and uh, we're ahead of the tax number, so you guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, folks. Well, it's the next day. We ended up we ran up to the tax room, so it really wasn't much that to fil much to film up there. Um, but I will show you what I got. So, Vanja, you wanted me to get one where it's chasing a pheasant, right? Yeah. Well, we don't shoot pheasants, and so here's the thing that you might not know about taxidermy. You can't just like shoot a coyote and get it mounted any way you want. Well, you might, but like place we take it to, they have form. So like it's basically a styrofoam coyote. They skin it and then put the skin over it. Well, the coyote skin has to be a certain size. Like they make the foam forms for certain size coyotes. So like you know from the nose to the eye has to be like four and a quarter and then you know that type of thing so i'm you know you're already limited based off the size of the coyote if you shoot a little bit bigger you have different options you shoot smaller you have more or trap i guess you have more options so with the options i had there really wasn't much and i was kind of hoping to do one mounted on a wall because every other mount that i have is on the wall i don't have any floor mounts but coyote's kind of big all the wall mounts didn't fit the size of the coyote that i that i trapped so we end up having to go with a floor mount and i went with a pretty basic one i'll pop up a picture here so that's basically what it's going to look like and you guys will see it in a year but the taxidermist that i went to is the one who did my first badger i know i get comments all the time. I read your guys' comments. You're talking about where's all my taxidermy from Africa? Where's all my taxidermy from last year's hunting season, trapping season? It's coming, okay? The badger, he said, is next up. So I should have actually the badger, you know, probably in the first couple weeks of January, hopefully. But the coyote I just trapped today, or yesterday, I should say, is not going to get back for another year. They're about a year out. So that's pretty much what we did. We went to the taxidermist, picked it out, paid for it, got all that type of stuff done. Then we ended up getting a goose mounted that I had on that Lucy retrieve that had a band. So with that being said, you missed out. Congrats. Thanks, guy. You, ne next one, catch a cook or? Come on. Come on. Oh, hey, hey, two two against one. We're doing it. All right, we're doing it. Oh, Ban gone you got no, you guys no, you no, guys we, need we, to come. We won't tell you when we're doing Our it. next coyote, do you want us to eat it or not? Banjo's on team no. I'm on team let's do it. Cause that's like one of the only animals we haven't actually tried eating that we've actually trapped or hunted before. So should we eat our next coyote? Comment down below what you guys think. We will catch you guys on the next episode. Hopefully we trap something. Well, actually, I hope we trap Bobcat next. So hopefully the next trap video you guys see is a bobcat in the back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Peace.